I built the same web app two different ways, first with AI and then without it, to see if it actually sped up my coding or if it was simply a waste of time. The app I built is called QuirkOn, short for QR Contact. And the idea is that you can quickly give somebody your contact information by having them scan a QR code. If you've ever been at a loud event and you've tried to exchange contact information, you know how difficult it can be to actually hear what the other person is saying, and it can be much easier to just give them a QR code to scan. I chose this app because it represents a good balance of simplicity and complexity, and it goes beyond a toy example where an LLM generates a to-do app with one prompt. This is a full stack app that's gonna have a front end, a server, authentication, a database. So it'll be like a real piece of software and with several different features. First, I'll build the app using Cursor and Claude Sonnet 3.5 and record how much time it takes me to get to a complete application. Then I'll give myself the same amount of time to try to build it from scratch using my own knowledge and whatever I can find on Google. Based on how long it takes me to build the application from scratch the second time around, or depending on how far I get, I'll have an idea of whether the AI actually sped me up or slowed me down. Coding with AI started off a little rough. Let's go ahead and give it a description of our app and we'll take it from there. I got the prompt on the screen here. Let's see what it does with this. This looks honestly like a mess, but let's just keep going. We'll keep iterating on this. I continued prompting and iterating and quickly started to see some big wins. Okay, okay, whoa, this looks a lot better. Hey, look at that. There's. There's a QR code now. Just tell it that we want a lock-in component and we're gonna use Firebase Auth and we'll, we'll see how it goes from there. Sign in. Volo builds, continue. Wow, look at that. That was actually the smoothest authentication experience I've ever had, so I'm just a little mind blown right now. <laughs> okay, amazing. We're actually connected to Mongo. So now we should be able to save these cards. So that, that's perfect, okay. But things weren't entirely smooth. I still had a lot of engineering problems that I had to solve. I've gotta solve a conceptual problem here in terms of how we're generating the ID. We'll refactor this in a bit. Actually, you know, why don't we refactor it now? Maybe we create some kind of permissions table. We're gonna go away from using state to control which page we're on. At one point, things quickly spun out of control as I lost track of what the AI was doing and had to spend a lot of time troubleshooting and refactoring things. There's some kind of a terrible render loop going on. What is the issue? I have no idea what happened there. I'm getting 400 errors from Google here. I'm, I'm just gonna paste all this stuff into cursor and we'll troubleshoot from there. This is quickly falling apart. Okay. Um, I guess the AI is fed up with me. I, I don't know what else to say. It's and this will happen if you're just getting really carried away with the AI and just assume that it can do everything. You really need to clarify your own thinking to be able to actually get it to do what you want. That And that's the biggest challenge really in engineering is just having a clear idea of what you want. Because right now, I actually don't really have a very clear idea of how I want the navigation to work and how I want the data passed in. There's all these details that I should be more precise about when I'm prompting the AI. And that's where you're gonna get caught if you don't really know what you're doing in terms of engineering. So that's where it helps to really have an engineering background when you're working with AI uh, so that you avoid these kinds of issues. After spending some time manually troubleshooting, I got things back on track and started to see even bigger wins. Okay, we're making some changes to several files. Yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what we want. Okay, let's see, this is a huge request. I think it might be up to the task. Yes, okay, amazing. So I'm able to see this contact information by going to the URL. The QR code contains this URL. So by scanning the QR code, this is what you're gonna see. Pretty much have the app working the way that I want. I have all the security. I got all the database stuff. I mean, it could use some more polishing. I think I'm just gonna stop here. So yeah, in three and a half, four hours, I was able to build all of this. And I think it would have taken me a lot longer if I didn't have the help of AI, but let's find out. Now I'm gonna switch gears and start building this app from scratch using my own knowledge. 
I have about 10 years of engineering experience, so I know what I'm doing, but as any senior engineer will tell you, regardless of how much experience you have, you're still going to have to look things up, read documentation, and troubleshoot your own errors. So building an app from scratch is never as smooth as you expect it to be. Alright, so now I got about three and a half hours to try to build this app from scratch. I have already solved a lot of the design and conceptual problems during the time that I was developing it with AI. So hopefully that gives me a little bit of a speed boost and we'll see if I can actually get it done in that time or how far along I get so that we can figure out how much did the AI actually help me. Let's see. Well, I'm just gonna start coding in app.js here. We'll have a div. Okay, let's copy paste this. Here we go. This is the typical way that we would code before AI. You would go to Stack Overflow and copy paste a bunch of stuff. Okay, look at that. We got a drop down. It is surprisingly difficult to code like this after you've been coding with AI for a while. Like just going in and changing values manually is pretty tedious <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, so we got the icon. Right now it's a string. I'll replace it with real icons, but I don't remember what the package name is. So we're gonna go back. I think it's just React icon. React icons. Okay, is there an npm install? Look, I have to go to the documentation just to like figure out what command to run. It is time, guys how to center a div. You know what, I think I'm gonna dive in and use Material UI because this is becoming like way too unruly for me. MUI input um, API. Okay, there we go, that looks super nice. You know, I have to say aesthetically speaking, I do like this a little bit better because it's just very simple, very tight, and I have a lot more control over it right now. So if I wanted to change some things on here, it would be pretty straightforward for me to do it because I wrote all of this code. So I know exactly where things are located. I wouldn't have to look for the right place as long. I continued coding and I'll spare you all the details, but generally speaking, it consisted of a lot of looking things up, reading documentation, troubleshooting self-induced errors, and so on. I spent about half an hour trying to get the database connection working, which was quite frustrating, although the authentication wasn't as bad as I expected. Towards the end, I really got into a flow, and the last 10 minutes of the project I spent in a mad sprint getting the card list working, which I did manage to do, but it did not look anywhere near as good as the AI version and I simply ran out of time after the three and a half hours. And there we are, it is over. I have run out of time. Definitely did not get as much done as with the AI version. We did get the card list in a super rough version here with the QR codes um, and, and the database working. This is basically just a minute after the time ran out, but um, you know, I'd need to clean this up. I need to make them clickable. I need to add the preview. I need to add contacts. Okay, so let's shift gears and try to figure out how much faster that AI actually made me given what I was able to do in the same amount of time coding from scratch. And then we'll see how much I still had to do and how long I think that would have taken me. It took me about an hour and a half to get to the same place with the AI code as it did building for three and a half hours doing it manually. That being said, I spent the next hour or so troubleshooting and refactoring different things. So I'm gonna take half of that and add it to the hour and a half. So I would say it took me about two hours to get to a similar point with the AI code and three and a half hours with the manual code. That being said, there were a number of features that were a lot more complete with the AI code at that point. Tallying up those missing features, I would add about another hour to the manual approach to get to the same place where it took me about two hours with the AI approach. So all in all, two hours with AI, four and a half hours with the manual. But I also wanna factor in the fact that I did know the design doing it manually. So I already knew how I wanted to route things and how I wanted data to be passed. So I'm gonna boost that time by about 15% to account for that speed factor in already having solved some of these conceptual problems. Boiling all of that down, in the end, it looks like the AI boosted my coding speed by quite a lot, uh, about two and a half times faster. And 
That was quite impressive. I mean, I knew the 10x number that people throw around sometimes is way out of left field, but two and a half times is no joke. Uh, if you can code that fast, you can get a lot more done. And if you're curious to see how I actually did that and learn to code like that yourself, check out this video, which is gonna go through the tools that I used and how you can actually achieve a similar result. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care.